In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I use Midjourney within Make.com to make images while I'm sleeping. That's right. This is actually using Midjourney within Make. And this is proof. So here I have a workflow and I'm going to show you exactly this entire thing step by step. I'll walk you through exactly how I did it, what tools I used, and I'll even provide the exact blueprint of my entire workflow in the description below. And this is completely for free. I'll even show you how to use ChatGPT to add descriptive file names to your your images and then all and upload all of them to your Google Drive uh, folder. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so let's get started. Now, first, I want to show you the actual flow. So there's two, this is broken up into two scenarios, and it has to be broken up into two scenarios for this to work. Um, so this is what it looks like in the scenario pane, um, just two of them. So you literally just make two different ones. Here's one of them, and then here's the other one. So what happens here is this one triggers, and I have it triggering on demand because for the this is only showing you how the mid journey portion of this works i'm not showing you how to use the flow to create blog articles with thumbnail images and all that stuff that's all look up to this i'm just showing you the mid journey part of it so because this is only instructional i'm not i don't have a variable hooked up to this i just have like a plain text that i'm just going to add to it so this is the the text that actually let's say let's do image of a blue bottle okay so we'll, we'll get to that later so right now if I click run once then it pushes that to this scenario and this goes through several steps I'm gonna go through these in a little bit I'm gonna show you that first now let's get to some uh, things that you're gonna need things first you're obviously gonna need a make.com account it's totally for free and to do this whole workflow is totally for free because uh, you can run these this whole thing for under a thousand operations a month um, we'll talk about operations in just a little bit. So that's the first thing that you need. No big deal there. The second thing that you need is a Midjourney account. Obviously, um, I don't. Let's see if I can go to Midjourney real quick. Midjourney pricing, and let's see if I can see pricing information. The basic plan starts at ten dollars, and you can do this at ten dollars. I have the thirty dollar plan because I use this quite a bit but you can just do this for 10 bucks all right the next thing that you need is this imagine API dot dev um, account uh, and this is approximately I think it's 30 bucks a month yeah it's 30 dollars a month but this is the whole thing that you need to run this um, and it works well I tried to use this I've tried to use this here user API and it was a little bit more of a headache that I wanted there's a lot of like videos showing you how to use it but the problem with this one is that once I got to the pricing it tells me how much I have to pay but then it needs for me to pay with crypto or something like that and I was just like I'm not trying to trying to join a new payment processor to buy crypto so that I could use it for this platform I'm just trying not trying to do that so that really turned me off from using um, user api.ai so I didn't go with them I, I went with uh, imagine API and I have had really good customer service going back and forth with the developer of this and it's been really great um, I do have a link to this product in the description um, if you want to use it that'll really help me out it helps out the channel it's an affiliate link but if you use it it's no no extra charge to you oh and obviously another thing that I should have mentioned image api.dev does have a make.com automation uh, module so it's right here and it's super super handy the first thing you need to do is click on this guy and um, add it to your scenario this is what it looks like on me once you make the connection um, let's go to the back end to see if I need to you definitely need to go to your API keys once you get the account go to your API keys you'll get your API key your copy and then your you'll bring in your module so you'll click add this guy right here generate an image and then you'll go to connections click add connection let me see if i can click yeah and then you just type in your api key there that's quite literally it after you do that your your first step is kind of done then just adding a prompt but of course ideally you would have a module here 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 and then here finally triggering this one to create the images because you don't want to go in here and manually type this out. This is you're using make.com, so you want to have dynamic variables to you to create the, the prompt. But after that first part is done, um, you'll go over to here and we're gonna be needing to create a webhook. In order to get the webhook working, we need to go into the back end of image image api.dev. We'll go to click webhooks, and then from here you'll click add a webhook, and you'll type oh wait, actually let me back up. You'll go over here first. You'll add a webhook here, like this. It'll be a custom webhook right there, just like this. You'll click it, and then you'll click 
um, add. And then I had to go into a new scenario just to test this out because I do it here, it would it would fill me up with some stuff that I, that you wouldn't be able, you, like you wouldn't see this stuff. So what you would do is you would go in here, create a webhook, and then you would click save and that's it. So it'll create that link right here. You're gonna copy, that's all you have to do. And then bring that over to here add, and add your webhook, click add. And there you go. So there, you, then your new webhook would be right there. Okay, so I just went back to my original one here. Um, so after you do that, it would look something like this. You'd have your webhook here, and then you move on to the next step. Uh, uh, given that from this module you copy this, you paste it in here, you add it, and then you can move to the next step. So next thing we need to do is generate the image data. So this thing created the image and now this is triggering to tell us when it's done. Forgot to mention there's a filter here, sorry. So the payload is complete and the status is complete. Um, then it will give it, then it can move on to the next step, which is to get the data from the image that I just created. And it's going to get the data. It's going to get four pieces of data. It's going to get the ID of four um, of the four images that I create. So the payload data, and then what do I want? I want the I, the data from the ID that's going to come in through here. I want to get that data. And then the next thing I want to do is get the URL of the upscaled, sorry, get the upscaled URL. So you can see here, this is an actual URL, and this is going to be the URL of the image. However, there's four images that Midjourney creates. So to do that, we need to use an iterator to go through all four images. And when it's done, it's going to push it to next to get the file. And the variable here is URL, and the URL is going to be the value of the iterator. So it's going to move on to the next step. Don't worry if you're getting uh, confused because I'm going to run this and then we're going to see every step of the way. In just a second, I just want to explain this to you a little bit now. Next thing it's going to do is going to get that file. Once it has that file kind of in memory, then it's going to create, this is the optional, uh, this is totally optional. Uh, then I'm going to have it read, basically look at that image and tell me what it thinks it is. So the prompt here is, what is this image? And then it's going to tell me what that image is. And then here I'm going to say, based on that image, a file name, which sanitize a sanitized file name so I can save it and it won't give me any errors. And it's less than like a uh, hundred characters. It's the prompt here. And finally, we're going to save all four of the images that I generated into our Google drive, uh, using the file name as the, as the, using the results of ChatGPT as the file name. Okay. So I know I talked a lot there, so let's just go ahead and run this. So instead of whatever I had here, let's add something like, um, image dog with wings. an image of a dog with wings. Now I typically have this always pre, this is a little trick that I do. Oh, by the way, in this, you can use all of your regular mid journey, um, operators just like this. But over here, I have things like HD detail, duo tone illustration, and then I have colors that I really want to emphasize um, and comic book style. Just a couple of preloaded things that I like to uh, to add to my images. All right, I'm going to click save and I'm just going to click run once because remember, this is on demand uh, and this is immediate. If I wanted to change, I could change this to on demand, but this has to be immediate and this has to be on demand. Well, this has to be on demand for, for my for me showing, let's click it. So now what just happened, it looks like nothing happened, right? It just, it, what did it just do? It just ran, what did it do? Well, it's actually just launched this to, it just sent this data. And now um, if we, we t if we pull out of this here, let's just get out of it. Let's discard changes. Um, if we take a look, we can actually see it running. Right now it's running, but look, it's running, it's running, it's running, it keeps running. Why does it keep running? Well, actually what it's doing, it's just go, it's, you know how Midjourney shows you the step percentage of done, 25%, 30, 40, 50, 100%. Once it gets, to, and that's why you kept seeing it this is update because it was moving through the percentages. Once it gets to 100%, the status of this webhook is going to be complete. And it just shoots, uh, it just said, yep, it is complete. Now I can move over to the next step, which is getting the data. Once it got that data, it, it went through the iterator and it gave me four uh, URLs. Because this generates four URLs, it needs to separate it into four bundles. Once it separates it into four bundles, I'm going to get four, UR, four URLs. It, it does four operations. So I got the HTTP um, uh, 
location, rather the URL of those four images, then I'm passing that over to ChatGPT right here. It's doing four different operations. And then look at this. It's telling me based on my prompt, what is this image? The image appears to be an aesthetically re aesthetic representation of a dog with wings, possibly in the style of a pop tart. I don't know, whatever. And then if you click on the other operation, it's a completely different description because it's a completely different image. So it's actually reading it's using vision to see what it is. Um, and then it's going over to the uh, the very basic, just create me a, a file name for this. This is the one. notice that I'm using uh, GPT 4.0 mini. That's because I checked and I from what I saw, that was the cheapest model. It's it's super cheap. So I can run this probably for a month and probably pay like less than a dollar. I don't know, but very, very cheap. Um, close that out. And then finally, the last thing it does, it saves my images to my drive. Now, in order to do this, you need to let's go through the individual modules just so because I know there's going to be some questions about this. Um, even though I'll have the blueprint uh, on the description below along with the you know if this is helping you out and if you do this please just if you sign up just use the link that I have on the description because it helps out the channel but no uh, extra charge to you it helps me out so thank you uh, the first thing I do uh, we already talked about webhooks now let's talk about um, you know we already we linked this up to the, the ID that the gets we what do we do here we iterator has to be the upscale URLs but do not if you just want the plain thing so you're not clicking this guy, you're clicking this guy, just like I have it right there, cancel. And then for the HTTP, it's just the value that it gets from here. This one is a little interesting. Analyze images with a vision. Make sure that that's the one that you're using for the, for if you're gonna do the, the what is this image module that I have here, the vision one. So I'll show you that right now. So if you click on that, you're gonna look for a specific one that says analyze image with vision. That's the one that's gonna be able to do this, not the others. And then for this one, it's just gonna be a regular chat complete. Um, so you can look at the parameters that I have there if you really want to. And then finally, save to drive. Now, here's a, um, an extra, extra fun tip for you. Um, if you want to use these automatically immediately and you don't want to go to your Google, oh, let me actually show you it running. So let me refresh this page, show you what it actually created. So this is on my Google drive and in it, it automatically should have added these. Let's go to by last modified. And there you go. Dog with wings, dog with wings, dog with wings. And look at the look at the uh, look at the the title dog with wings stylized dog with wings stylized dog with wings. If we click on it, let's see if we can actually read the title a little better. Dog with wings pop art art graphic design vibrant colors dynamic background. So you see, it looked at the picture, it gave it a, a actual a name. Now I don't know why this one's not showing properly, but I don't care. If you want to automatically use these, kind of like how I do right here. Um, and what I mean by that is instead of having to click download and then use this in the project and, and whatever you're using, if you wanted to have images automatically show up and like this on a folder, you can use the Google Drive um, for desktop. And what that does, it will Google Drive icon to the top of your your computer and it also adds a, a shortcut here and that's where you can access everything that's on your Google Drive right there on the sidebar. So what I can do now is throw this onto WordPress right here. I don't even need to download it and upload it. It's just a little shortcut, just a nice little thing. If you wanted to learn how to do that, I think it's just um, just Google install Drive for, for desktop and that's how you can do that. But essentially that's it. Um, Let's see, if you have any questions about this, let me know, I'll be happy to help. And again, I will, you know what, so I don't forget, I'm gonna make sure to export this blueprint. I'll have it right here for you guys, and then I will add it to my personal website, and it'll be in the the first link in the, in the just well, the second, it'll be the second link in the description. And you could, don't, you could download that totally for free. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and give a subscribe, it means a lot. Share it with someone else who wants to see this kind of stuff, and uh, let me know what you think. All right, take care.